in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Someone said one day that partial obedience is total disobedience. And someone else said postponed obedience is a current disobedience. So what about you and me? Are we living in this partial obedience or the postponed obedience, which is currently a disobedience? Let us learn from Virgin Mary today because she wants to teach us obedience. I will share with you one verse from Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. We know that the angel appeared to Virgin Mary and he encountered with her the good news of the, uh, uh, the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then she said at the very end, Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Yes. She said, What you are offering me is above my understanding. It's the most gracious gift a woman can dream at that time, that the Son of God is going to be her son. That's why we call our Virgin Mary, Sotokos, the mother of God. But why obedience is so important? If you imagine that Virgin Mary will postpone this response, and she is going to tell the angel, give me a few time, some time to think of it. She will be a period of disobedience, which never happened. Virgin Mary, other option. It's too much for me. I can't take it. She will miss out. Unfortunately, we are living in this partial obedience and in the same time in the postponed obedience. But what Virgin Mary wants to tell us today, it's time to respond positively and actively to each and every word from the Word of God. Let me share with you a few verses from Exodus chapter 24 and how to see that what Virgin Mary did, it shows one important thing. She knew the scriptures. She followed the scriptures. The story in chapter 24 tells us that God commanded Moses to take his brother Aaron and his two sons and to go to the mountain. He received the word of God. Then he came down, and after he came down, he uh, offered the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and he split the blood of those animals into two halves. First half he offered on the burnt offering sacrifice, burnt offering altar, and the second half he kept it. And it says in verse 6, and Moses, Exodus 24, 6, Moses took half the blood and put it in the basins and have the blood sprinkled on the altar. Then verse 7 tells us, Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people and they said all that the Lord has said will do and be obedient. In Hebrew, it's will do and will hear. And in Arabic, it's the same. But why in this time we will do and hear? Or in this translation, we will do and be obedient. And here, what all the rabbis are confirming, the meaning of this verse. Normally, I can say, I will hear and do. This is one of the very few times I will do and hear. So the rabbis teaches us at this point that the commandments in the Old Testament were three kinds of commandments. First kind is called mishpatim. Don't kill, don't steal. I know it's wrong. If I will do it, even the civil law will tell me there is something wrong here. Second part of the commandments, you call them edos. Edos means testimonies. How to celebrate the feast of Passover. How to celebrate the feast of Tabernacle. So something happened, and we have to repeat it every year as the Lord commanded them. The third part, we call it Chakim. Chakim means orders. 
it is not understandable for them. Like, don't break a bone of the best over lamb. They spent 1500 years doing this. They didn't know at all till the true lamb of God came and was crucified and no bone has been broken from him. Then this is what the rabbis used to teach. The first and second, very logic. Mishpatim, don't kill. I know if I will kill, there's something. There's punishment coming upon me, even from the civil law. Edus is well known. We know that the Israelites went out of Egypt with the mighty hand of the Lord, and they have such great victory. So we have to celebrate the bus over in a certain way. But the hakim, or the orders, is a part that make a Jew a real Jew. Why? Because it's obedience. And it shows that you believe that the one who said these words is the Lord himself. That's why you'll find the immediate verse, verse 8. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. When we obey, when our decision is we will do because the Lord has spoken, then we will hear any interpretation from the rabbis in the Old Testament. If we are convinced or not, our decision is we will do because we trust that the Lord has spoken. Then you were under the covenant. This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. Virgin Mary was enjoying the fullness of the obedience to be in the covenant. And now, what about me and you? Are we still choosing between commandments? This is for me now. Or I'm too young, later I will do it. I will think of it. Or I'm not convinced. The Hakim was telling us, if you trust, this is the absolute faithful word of God. If you trust that this is the word that God has spoke, it's the breath of God. It means I have to obey, to enjoy the fullness of the grace of being obedient. That's why Virgin Mary today is teaching us how to obey, not only to reason. When we obey the commandments, it's not against logic. It's not against our own understanding. It's above them all. Maybe I cannot understand it, I cannot grasp it now, but there's a power. You are under the full protection of the covenant with the blood, not of bulls and, go and goats anymore. It's the blood of the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let us all take refuge in full obedience to the commandments to enjoy the power of the protection of the blood of, lamb, of the Lamb. May the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever. Amen.